Okay, now let's try this one, I guess. Um, write the following names of these transition metal polyatomic ion formula units. Um, as you can see, just like the question implies, we have a series of transition metals, um, and they're uh, combined in uh, ionic bond with these various polyatomic ions. So uh, the real uh, the real question is uh, when we look at these complex, how do we start? Uh, the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, well, since all these are transition metals, we really don't know what the uh, charge is because you don't have a regular charge scheme with these transition metal complexes or these transition metal ions. So um, what you can figure out though is if you've memorized all of your polyatomic ions, you realize what the charges of these polyatomic ions are and you've got to start there. Okay, so um, this compound um, is, this has a nickel and a nitrate. So remember we have to do the polyatomic ion first. So nitrate is NO3 and we've got to remember that that's one minus. Okay, so if we've got two of them, right, the subscript says we have two of them, so let's just pull that two out in front. So that means we have two minus charges. So in order to balance two minus charges with only one nickel, that means that we've got to have nickel two plus. Okay, so two plus minus two equals zero. So uh, the name of this compound is actually going to be nickel 2 nitrate. So let's go ahead and do this one now. Uh, again, cobalt's a transition metal, so we don't know what the uh, normal uh, oxidation state of this um, ion is. So uh, we go over to our polyatomic ion here. Uh, we realize that the name of this ion is acetate. Okay, acetate is uh, C2H3O2 um, and uh, it's got actually a minus charge on it. Okay, and if we look over here it's got a subscript of two outside the parentheses. So we know that means that there's two of them. So we have a overall two minus charge, okay? And when we're going to combine that with this cobalt, there's only one of them. So we know that the cobalt has to have an overall two plus charge to counterbalance that two minus charge, like that. So it's gonna be the same type of complex as the one before it. But uh, we're of course going to name it differently. This is going to be cobalt two acetate, like Okay, so let's get into a more hairy one here. This iron phosphate uh, thing. So um, of course PO4 uh, we have to remember again is phosphate. So PO4. And what's the charge on a phosphate uh, polyatom? Uh, well, that's negative three. And again, that's just something you've got to memorize. And we look back over at the formula unit. It's got a two outside the parentheses. So what does that mean? That means that there's two of them. So uh, what we do now is take two and multiply that by three. That gives us negative six, okay? If we look over here, we've got three irons, okay? If we're going to uh, try to get six out of that, it, uh, it's just going to be uh, six divided by three. What is that equal? That equals two. So we know that iron, three irons, are all going to have a plus two charge, okay? So if we multiply three by two, that equals six plus, right? and 2 by 3, that equals 6 minus. Those two balance out, give us 0, so um, this has got to be the right oxidation state. So what we have here is again iron 2 um, phosphate.
And finally, um, I guess I didn't uh, make this problem very interesting because this is also going to be have a plus two oxidation state, um, the zinc that is. But if we look at this again, we have to look first at the polyatomic ion. This polyatomic ion is cyanide. Uh, if we remember, cyanide has a minus charge. Okay, with the two outside of the parentheses, of course. It means there's two of them. Uh, two times minus one is uh, minus two. And since there's only one zinc atom, that means that the zinc has to counterbalance those two charges by itself. So that means it's going to be zinc two plus. And then if we go over here, we would call this zinc two. Sorry. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. <laughs>